So Unity just uh, shadow dropped Unity 2021 LTS. And unfortunately, I'm full of a cold, so I'm going to try and keep the energy up. I might not be able to prove that, but I just want to give a sort of high level look at all of the kind of improvements that are coming to it. I'll try and move through it quite fast. And in the background here, I've got the Unity HDRP terrain sample running in the LTS version of Unity 2020.1.3, which came out today. So let's just start diving into these release notes. But so what are some of the top level uh, Unity 2021 features? Well, we've got faster iteration to get to quality and uh, there's better editor usability, enhanced testing tools. For example, just editor performance is increased kind of on the whole. We've even got improved C Sharp 8 support in this release of Unity. There's also been improvements to VFX graph, shader graph, Cinemachine, visual scripting. Uh, so the headline there is that there's more accessible creative workflows. On top of that, we've got um, big URP updates such as uh, decals, point light shadows and lens flares. This now brings it in closer parity to the built-in render pipeline. And for HDRP, we've got NVIDIA DLSS for desktop, volumetric clouds and static shadow casters. And now you can reach new generations of players as well because they've introduced macOS based Apple Silicon support, Chrome OS support, uh, PS5 and Xbox Series XS consoles. And they've even got uh, more VR support with OpenXR and Oculus enhancements as well. So what else has changed? So let's take a look at what's changed for artists and designers. The new UI toolkit has moved from being in preview to being kind of released. And the UI toolkit offers an intuitive authoring experience to help artists and designers get faster with uh, dedicated tools like a UI builder and UI debugger. And Unity actually recommend now using the new UI toolkit for new projects. But they do say, you know, uh, there are still cases where it makes sense to use the older systems. There's improved world building and environments, such as uh, the terrain tools package has moved again out of preview into sort of like the release candidate. And that was that's what's been used to create this scene that's kind of running in the background. We've got a um, new Sprite Atlas version two uh, now supports folders and this has two new APIs for a more efficient Sprite packing. And there's been updates to the 2D PSD importer, um, such as improved usability and can now turn laser groups into sprites, as well as 2D animation um, improvements, such as the user experience in the skinning editor. As previously mentioned, URP has got enhanced support for decals, improved screen space, ambient occlusion, uh, light cookies, light anchors, light layers and lens flares. HDRP has got volumetric clouds and cloud layers. You'll also find improved lighting with the dynamic pre-baked um, enlightened system, the real-time SSGI and baked experimental probe volume global illuminations, as well as light anchors and light lens flares. That was very hard to say. And there's even something called the burstified render loop, which sounds exciting. And there's been improvements to uh, cinematics as well. So sequences is available to build and organize timelines. Recorder is verified and supports new codecs such as ProRes. And there's two new apps, uh, both powered by Live Capture. There's Unity Face Capture, which is a new app that allows facial animation without an animator, and Unity Virtual Camera, which uses a mobile device to drive a camera in the scene. For programmers, uh, we've had a model upgrade and a new .NET profile, which gives us improved C Sharp 8 syntax support. This enables you to program more streamlined switch expressions and nullable reference types which offers greater functionality with less code. Uh, we can now move quicker between asset creation tools and Unity. Uh, the iteration loop between the asset creation and the editor is now much faster with texture and model import optimizations and a new option to import textures and meshes in parallel as well. There's been IL2CPP uh, runtime performances as well. For example, delegate invocation is now faster than it was before and they've doubled the performance of generic virtual and interface method calls. It's been a performance and quality boost for both URP and HDRP, meaning that the scriptable render pipeline is now part of Unity Core. So that includes URP and HDRP. There's also improved stability for VFX graph and shader graph integration into VFX graph means that your graphics code runs more smoothly and with more features, such as being able to render lit particles in URP and HDRP now has the dynamic resolution upscalers such as NVIDIA DLSS, AMD FSR and TAA upscale. Uh, AMD FSR is also available now for URP. There's been optimizations for mobile uh, games and the workflows there, as well as profile and testing and um, XR, so AR and VR improvements as well. And they also kind of 
point back out about Gigea, the new sort of sample game that they've, they're they working on. The landing page of uh, LTS makes it actually sound like Gigea was launched alongside it. That's not the case, um, but I'll be keeping my eye out for that to be released. So, so I can do a walkthrough and kind of a first look at that uh, once that's available. But yeah, if you want to read more in depth about any of this that I've covered, I'll put a link to the release notes in the description below. I'd love to know what you're most excited about with the 2021 LTS release. Uh, let me know in the comments below or we'll join the Discord server and we can chat about it there. Uh, the Discord server is linked in the description too. I'd like to take a minute to thank my Patreons. In the 10,000 XP tier, we have Sector Sweep. You can see all of the other 4,000 XP tier members on screen now. Thanks a lot for your support. But in the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.